Asphalt shingle keyway, offset book, whatever you want to refer to it at is, is the offset between or the distance between keyways when it comes to shingles. So flip the camera around and hopefully you can learn something from this really quick tip and show you some evidence of why it is so important. And all those guys that are the world's fastest roofers don't give a damn about it and their stuff will leak years down the road. Let's see what we got here. All right, so asphalt shingles, keyway, stagger pattern. It's when, uh, like I just said, right here from this keyway here, to the next one. This is a pretty big offset right here, but uh, yeah, let's see from this one here to this one here. It is decently sufficient. You want to see what the uh, manufacturer's recommendations say on the package, read them up. Even though this one is close, uh, not, I'm sorry, not close, I'll actually put a tape measure on it right here, so I'm trying to avoid to show you. The water trail that you can see coming in where the two shingles join right here, water will get into those. This underlying side of the shingle below it is to protect it and eventually run out. That's also why you don't want a solid line of seal strip because it channels over. The lower the slope, the more the issue. You can see the dirty water trail coming over. Let's get a tape measure here. Where's my tape measure? Right here. All right, a good rule of thumb is no closer, no less than five inches. So we're actually five and a half inches, roughly. The pitch is probably, at least the section I'm on, I don't know, probably a 412 or so. It's not flat, it's decent enough. But you can clearly see the evidence, the remnants of over the time, dirty water trail. By the way, why I'm here, I'm actually putting this little bathroom damper vent in right in this general vicinity here. And I happen to see this and wanted to point this out. So the biggest issue you run into if you have water lateral movement is the keyway next to it. And then you get nails, things like that. The nails typically seal tight and takes time to waller out, rust out due to the moisture it's getting on it. Then eventually it'll drip in. The keyway though, however, is more important. Water coming over to the keyway, the shingle under it, I've already got this loose, you can see only goes up that high. So if water got on right here or wicked back up under, it's on the shingle below it, provided it's installed good, no nails in the keyway, no offset too close, then it will run out. But with it coming in this bad, this high is actually missing the shingle below it. You can see it is hit here. Let's pull this out. I believe I pretty much already got it loose. There's a couple nails in it, but we're going to replace those two. Wow, that reveals some uh, troubling news here. Look at the dirty water trail. Now, they do have ice and water here, which is good. It's going to stick. It's thick. It's more rigid than opposed to a thin piece of black felt paper or synthetic. But that water trail spans. Now it has surface tension here and is going to just wick all the way across. All the way across here. And continues. Probably not just this one, it might be other various areas, but you will have lateral water movement. It's very important to make sure your book is off. Some guys call it a keyway, stagger pattern, zipper, I've heard it, many different things. Simple example of what it is, is the distance between the two shingles, from here to here. The next shingle up, the next row up, you wanna make sure it's offset. Nail's not in the area. The lower the slope, you don't want to, well, actually, let me just kind of clear something up here. Steve, most manufacturers will allow any kind of asphalt shingle on a 412 pitch, which is nothing more than four inch rise for 12 inches in. If you take a tape measure, you measure 12 inches in. Actually, let me just describe that right here with a visual. All right, looking at this gable end right here. If you were to mark this right here and you measure in 12 inches on a horizontal level line, and then you measure up, the distance there is the rise. So this is probably a 12-12 pitch just looking at it. So if you measure, try to do this one-handed here, 12 inches right here. Imagine that line right there going up. I mean, it's really hard to do without a level by myself and holding the phone. But that's probably a 12-12, also a 45 degree angle. Water is going to be pulled down a whole lot quicker than soaking and running laterally. I mean, if you poured a cup of water on this, it's going to run down. If you pour a cup of water on this, it's going to run down, yes, but it's also going to flow out further. If you pour it on a flat table, it's going to just smear out 360 degree direction. So, when you have a low slope section, that most manufacturers will honor down to a 412, uh, 412 up to, I don't know, 6, 8, 7, 12, whatever it is, considered a low slope that's sufficient. 312, most manufacturers, I believe, will honor installation and warranties with asphalt shingles, provided you use ice and water on that slope. Anything lower than 312, you really risk, one, manufacturers not honoring a warranty claim if there's a problem, or two, more damage to your house, or, which is worse, damage to your house. Low slope sections need something for that section. 
roll roofing, modified torch down stuff, TPO, EPDM rubber, whatever the case is, you've got to use the right material for the job you're working on. This is steep enough, but there's definite evidence and a good learning point. This is actually a rather bad one. It also kind of ties into a similar circumstance of when you have a, that's a laced valley there, um, a closed cut valley. So you would, whatever side's lower, or in this case, they're both same height, same pitch. You would just run, well, this one's lower. You probably run this first, um, all the way across, bring this one over and then they cut the valley. Well, if you do that, you have a, a little point right here where your cut is coming down. Water hitting that valley catches that little point. And this is a good example of that. It's not a valley, but water will trickle across that all the way. And I've seen leaks develop because of that. So when I'm done putting this in right here, what I'm definitely going to do is anywhere I have worked any of these keyways, I'm gonna put a little bead of sealer, slight V shape like that, to block anything coming in here from running laterally across this. Same on this one here, this here, that, that. So just some tips and a good visual of lateral water movement. The lower the slope, the more the effect, the more the issue will be, but this is a bad one. This is actually rather bad. And they do have, like I said, ice and water, which is a good thing. Hopefully it'll eventually work its way out, but that's why you're getting all these nails rusting. You can see the nail heads are rusting. It's because moisture over time is getting to them. Yes, this is an aged roof for those that want to try to sell it and turn it in on hail damage, whatever the case may be. It's outside the scope of this video. You can see, obviously, there's some good hail or I'm sorry, not hail, but granule loss on this. They're old. We're just simply installing a, a damper vent for them to get the moisture of a power fan or a uh, ceiling fan out of the attic area. Ooh, it's hot out at six, seven minutes or so. So time to wrap up. Give it a thumbs up if you could, if you like the video. If you don't, then maybe give it a thumbs down. Maybe it still might help the algorithm. I don't know, but until next time, be safe and we'll see ya. I feel like I'm spinning. I can't even see my screen. Give it a thumbs up. Until next time, be safe and we'll see you on the next video.